This recipe is inspired by two of my favorite mac and cheeses in New York City. First one's that Danny Meyer's Blue Smoke. Danny Meyer, of course, the creator of Shake Shack. Their mac and cheese has this really yummy mouthfeel, classic cheese sauce to it that I'm really gonna kind of steal from them. And then the other one is Mighty Quinn's Barbecue, and they take like a, a real kind of simple multi-cheese mac and cheese approach with shells, and then on top is this very stuffing-like breading or crust. It always just reminded me of stuffing and Thanksgiving and I always wanted to kind of smash the two together so today we're putting my stuffing recipe on top of mac and cheese to create a carb overload that really could only make sense on Thanksgiving. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing we gotta do is we gotta make the stuffing. And right here I just have some diced onion and some diced celery. I have this Arnold's country white bread. This is the bread my mom always used. This very special seasoning, basically an MSG seasoning, George Washington seasoning. Make a little broth with it with like, I don't know, two to four of these packages, and that's gonna go and create the moisture and some butter. This recipe, my mom's famous stuffing recipe, all of that is in my holiday plan of attack. It is linked down below. It is updated constantly with all my new holiday recipes as I release them. You can access it be by becoming a patron member or by paying $15. Aside from all these recipes, it's got exclusive holiday content that's gonna help you cook your way smoothly through the holidays. So if you're interested, please check out the link down in the description. And then let's just go over and make this stuffing real quick. Get a large nonstick pan on high heat and add a couple tablespoons of unsalted butter. And once the pan is hot and the butter is melted, add the celery and the onion. Season that with salt and cook the celery and onions until they begin to caramelize, adding more butter if needed. Once caramelized, add the cooked veggies to the bread and mix that all together. And then slowly start to incorporate that broth into the stuffing just until the stuffing starts to form these little clusters. Then get the pan back on the stove and add a little bit more butter I know it's a lot of butter, but forget about it. This is Thanksgiving, your diet starts in January. Cook the stuffing in the pan until the bread begins to brown and caramelize. Once the stuffing's browned, place it in a sheet tray in a flat single layer and pop that into a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 20 minutes until the stuffing crisps up a little bit. Now onto this cheese sauce from Blue Smoke, which starts with an infused cream. In a small pot, add a touch of oil, a whole garlic clove smashed, half a thinly sliced onion, and sweat that for a minute or two. Then add about 10 whole peppercorns and a few slices of pickled jalapenos. Fresh jalapenos work as well. Cook for another minute or two and then add a tablespoon of the pickled jalapeno vinegar or white vinegar if you don't have that. And then a quarter cup of white wine. Reduce that until there's almost no liquid left. Then pour in the cream, bring it up to a gentle simmer, and then kill the heat and let that cream sit and infuse for a few minutes. At this point, the stuffing should be ready. Just set that off to the side. So now while that cream is infusing with all of those flavors that are gonna sort of elevate the sauce, we can talk about our cheeses and sort of get to grating them. 
Now I've got some cheddars here, two types of cheddars. I've got a red wax gouda, and uh, essentially, it doesn't matter what cheese you use. Obviously, cheddar is pretty classic. It has the color, it has the flavor, the creaminess, the meltiness, but you can sort of play around. So like, use this as a framework. What I basically want is around a pound to a pound and a quarter of cheese total. And uh, I've done this before, I've just made it with the cheddar. I've made it with cheddar and gouda, which I really like. I have this 12 year cheddar and then this 16 to 18 year cheddar. And you can see the difference. This aged cheddar has these crystals in them. So even though it's just a few months more aged, the flavor in this one is way more intense, yet it's still a relatively soft cheese. Like I can kind of squish it a little bit. So I think this cheese will melt well, it'll add the flavor. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the 12 year cheddar, a little bit of the more aged cheddar, some of the red wax gouda, and blue smoke. I kept asking them, what is the secret to your sauce? And uh, they kind of gave it up. They said it was American cheese. And I knew it. It gives it this kind of mouth feel that you just can't get with other cheeses. And so you cannot add American cheese. This is actually Velveeta. It's about six slices of Velveeta. You don't have to, but I really think it adds that final kind of touch at the end that uh, makes this so good. So let's just grate this up. And so here's our cheese mixture. We're going to pour that cream into here to make the cheese sauce. Oh shoot, I gotta, don't forget to get the pasta water on. Totally forgot. Got some cavatappi here. I really like this shape. It's kind of like a macaroni, but extends into like a twirly. I also think uh, shells would be a really good shape for this mac and cheese, specifically because it kind of will, specifically because it's gonna kind of nestle in little pieces of the stuffing in the kind of shell. So you kind of use whichever pasta you want, but you wanna get a pot of water boiling and we're gonna cook it about three to four minutes before it's cooked, a little past halfway because we're gonna finish cooking this in the oven. So do not cook these all the way. Fill up a pot about a quarter of the way up with water and bring it to a simmer. I forgot to mention to put that cheese in a heat proof bowl so that we can turn this into a double boiler to melt this cheese. Pour the infused cream into the cheese and begin to mix over simmering water until the cheese sauce melts. Squeeze all that flavor out of there. The steam will gently melt the cheese, creating this silky, luscious cheese sauce. While the cheese is melting, season a big pot of water with salt for the pasta. Once the pot of water is boiling, add the pasta and cook for about seven to eight minutes before straining. By now the cheese sauce should be fully melted, season it with a touch of salt if needed, and we're ready to put this all together. So we got our cheese sauce. It's a beautiful, smooth, cheesy sauce. It's gonna be perfect for mac and cheese. So we're just gonna add the par cooked macaroni into the bowl. And it's just glistening. And I just got some Panko breadcrumbs here. Just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil so that I can get those nice and crispy. Try and get those breadcrumbs absorbing that oil. Now I got my stuffing here, and I kind of want to get it a little granular. Now we're gonna take just a baking dish. I'm gonna do a mini scale version of this, but if you do a big Thanksgiving version of it, you know, you just use a bigger baking dish like this. I don't know how small this is, but this is a mini guy. Add your mac and cheese. I mean, look at that mac and cheese. And we're gonna go over top with the breadcrumbs. We don't want it like completely cover the top. I kind of just want to create little peaks of the noodle underneath. I want you to be able to see the macaroni underneath it. 
But that looks like a plate of Thanksgiving if I've ever seen one. This is gonna go into a 400 degree oven, 20 minutes really, like I'm not gonna go by time, I'm gonna go by color and the crispness of the stuffing and the mac and cheese and if I see bubbling around. What, bubbling is always a good sign, it's pretty much done. So I'm gonna, just gonna put it on something just in case it does bubble over into the oven. That's just a happy meal. See how al dente it is? Sticks to the fork, but has a little jiggle. You can see al dente when it's done right. That's why you have to par cook it. Mm. I know you may be thinking, why put stuffing on mac and cheese? But people do serve mac and cheese at Thanksgiving. They got stuffing. Why don't you just put it together? The flavors combine in a really nice way, especially if it's a more simple stuffing like this one. You know, it's just a fantastic dish. And even if you don't want to add the stuffing to it, at the end of the day, you got a great mac and cheese recipe out of it. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed that one. That one is particularly delicious, so I'm going to really urge you to try it. Holiday Plan of Attack, if you have not gotten it, it's down in the link, go check it out. You Patreon members who are scrolling up on the screen right now, you get that for free. So make sure you click through to Patreon and grab the Plan of Attack and all of the exclusive content that comes with it. All the links to my videos always are down in the description. There's gear links, there's merch links, there's recipe links, all sorts of stuff. Always go check that out if you have a question. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.